Hi and welcome back to my channel and this freezer meal prep video. Now these meals are just little bits and pieces that I'm going to put together to make those busy school run afternoons just that little bit easier. Now I have quite a variety of flavors here and I also have a couple of chicken based meals and then a couple of beef mince based meals so there is really quite a big variety. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in just keep on watching. I'm going to kick the video off with three cheesy creamy pasta based recipes. So the first thing I'm doing is just chopping up two onions there that I'm just slowly frying off over a low, low to medium heat just with a little bit of oil, some salt and pepper. Now the three different recipes um, will be a sun-dried tomato and basil pasta which I'm preparing here. I'm just chopping off up my sun-dried tomatoes and they're the fresh basil as well. Um, I'm going to do just a plain bacon and cheesy pasta um, and then I'm also going to do a chicken and bacon cheesy pasta. So again it's the same base and just three different flavors that I'm doing there. So that's the first one done there with the, um, sun-dried tomato and basil. It's quite a nice veggie one. If you haven't tried it I would definitely recommend it. I've made it a couple of times for my family. Now I'm just moving on to preparing the bacon. Now again I need bacon for two recipes here so I'm cutting up seven um, pieces of smoked back bacon um, I find using a scissors is the easiest way but obviously if you think a knife is easier then go ahead and do that so I'm just going to chop that up and then I'm going to fry that off as well there was sun and there was rain just moving on to the chicken now I have about one and a half chicken breast fillets here that I'm just chopping up into bite-sized pieces and I'll be flavoring that with garlic granules mixed herbs and paprika now if you don't have any herbs or spices in your cupboards what I would recommend is that you go out buy these three salt and pepper and you can make so many dishes with those combinations or some combination of that so I'm just as you saw there I added a little bit of rapeseed oil but use whatever oil you have so I've taken out a third of the onions that I fried off and I'm adding the bacon to the remainder because I need the bacon and onions for two of the three dishes. I'm just frying off that bacon until it's completely cooked with the onion mix and then I'm also frying off the chicken until it's nice and brown. I just think it gives it a little bit of extra flavor. Now once the bacon is completely cooked I'm going to separate that into two dishes because I have one for the chicken and bacon and then the, uh, the last bit is just for the plain bacon the cheesy bacon pasta which we will actually be having on this night that I was preparing this um, so I've removed all of that as you can see there the one dish that will be going into the freezer is a sun-dried tomato basil and onion one and the other one is the, the bacon and um, chicken one and now I'm just making the cheesy sauce that will be going with all three the meals so the general ratio that I would use is 25 grams of butter to 25 grams of flour to 200 mils of um, milk but I'm obviously tripling that because I'm making it for three dishes here so you put the butter in until it melts you add the flour until it forms what's called a roux just make sure that it just cooks the, the flour just a little bit and then I just add in the milk little by little until the sauce is a nice creamy consistency and I'm just going to be adding um, some sharp cheddar cheese or mature cheddar cheese here I have all of the measurements in the description box below if you're interested interested in making any of these dishes and I would definitely recommend all of them. So um, what I started doing fairly recently is just adding a little tiny knife point of um, English mustard. You don't taste the mustard, it just makes the cheese taste a lot cheesier. So I'm just um, separating um, the cheese sauce here between the three dishes just in equal quantities just using rough measurements here and then while the the cheese sauce was cooking I was also making some pasta I go on 200 grams of dry pasta per meal for my family of five with the youngest being 18 months old um, so I'm just separating that as well between the three dishes and that is basically it with the one that we're eating tonight which is just the cheesy bacon pasta I tend to just um, cut up tiny pieces of sort of tomato slices of tomato I put that on top cover it in cheese and then bake it the tomatoes just go so nice and jammy and it is so lovely so really do give that a try as well and I'm just going to top it off with a little bit of mixed herbs and paprika because 
just a little bit of extra flavor and I think the colors also are very nice and the other two I'm just going to mix through and wrap up and put in the freezer for another night. some carrots on 75% off at my local Aldi which is not something I see that often and I tend to love just grating up carrots and adding it to any meals because it's just an extra veg it's cheap and cheerful um, so I'm just literally prepping the entire bag I've peeled it I'm topping and tailing it and then I'm just going to grate everything and I'm going to be adding it to all the meals as I go through um, this video Here we go. Now the first meal that I'm working on is a teriyaki chicken. So I'm using 500 grams of chicken thigh fillets, three garlic cloves that I've crushed, a tablespoon of ginger. You can use fresh ginger but I tend to just use the um, pickled kind that I have here and I just cut it up with my scissors. Um, a quarter cup of soy sauce, a quarter cup of brown sugar and then a tablespoon of honey. Now on this occasion I did add in that handful of carrots because extra veggies can never be a bad thing um, and then I also finely sliced one red onion. Now when I'm ready to serve this I will take it out and defrost it um, during the day or overnight and you can either just bake it in the oven at around 180 for 30 to 35 minutes or you can put it in the slow cooker for around four hours and it'll just be like shredded chicken and um, if you do it that way alternatively obviously you can also put it in um, the instant pot and I would do it on um, high for about 20 minutes and you'll also get sort of a shredded, tex uh, shredded chicken texture if you do it in the oven it does stay sort of solid pieces of chicken and that is actually really nice and I think it's actually my favorite way to serve this and I tend to just serve it with some white basmati rice on the side I sprinkle on some sesame seeds and then I put some sort of veggies on the side generally we go for broccoli and just some sweet corn as well to jalapeno popper chicken now for this one you'll need three chicken breast fillets one brown onion that i just sliced up um, thinly half a cup of frozen corn around about an eighth of a cup of jalapenos but just do it to taste um, i use three strips of smoky back bacon which i diced up into bite-sized pieces a half a cup of mature cheddar cheese grated and then of course i added in half a cup of my grated carrots just to bulk out the meal you don't notice it you barely even see it and it does not alter the flavor in my opinion and then in terms of spices I use salt pepper chili and garlic salt as well um, once so that's everything that I put in the bag um, and what I did is put it in the instant pot for around 20 minutes on high but of course you could do it in the slow cook I would say for around four minutes sort of on medium or high once it's done um, cooking and everything is all shredded up um, you stir in a whole pot of soft cheese now what I will say is that I tasted it before I added the soft cheese and I thought the spice level was quite good um, so I added in more jalapenos because I thought the soft cheese will bring down the spice level don't make the same mistake I did for some reason it just increase the spiciness the soft cheese did not bring it down it just made it creamier but this is definitely one to try I simply served it on some white rice because I thought there was quite a lot of veggies already in there so I didn't feel like we needed anything else on the side beyond gravel beyond a bigger scale the world in hand 
Moving on to honey mustard chicken. Now for this one you'll need two um, chicken breast fillets, a chicken stock cube, two tablespoons of honey, half a teaspoon of Dijon or English mustard, two teaspoons of whole grain mustard and then my trinity, a tablespoon of each of paprika, mix herbs and garlic granules. And then I just added in a tablespoon of oil. Um, I used rapeseed oil on this day just because I was a little bit scared that the honey uh, might sort of burn quickly because of the high sugar content. Now I've used this exact marinade actually on baked potatoes and that was absolutely a race to potatoes and that was really delicious. And I've also used it on chicken skewers on the barbecue and that was amazing. So definitely one to try out. Moving on to the next one which is actually a mince based recipe and we're going to be making chili. Now this is um, for two batches because I use this for quite a lot of different dishes. So what I have here is 750 grams of lean mince, three medium carrots that I've grated just to bulk up the veg content there, two onions diced and then four peppers. Um, I would use a mixture of colors. It doesn't really matter, I think, which colors, but I would say if you can have more than one color, that is preferable. And then in terms of spices, which I clearly am measuring with my heart here, is two tablespoons of cumin, two tablespoons of paprika, one teaspoon of cayenne. Please be careful, cayenne can be very very spicy two tablespoons of garlic granules two tablespoons of onion powder and then one tablespoon of oregano or oregano depending on where you're from and then also salt and pepper to taste now what i'll do is i'll put all of this in the instant pot uh, sorry not in the instant pot in the slow cook or you can do it stove top and then once it's sort of cooked through I would add in um, two tablespoons of tomato paste and then I would either add in um, some chopped tomatoes, two tins, so one per portion and then once that's cooked through I would add in kidney beans but if you do have access to an Aldi and they have these flavored beans, the taco beans or the chili beans available that is preferable so if I have those I would not add in the tomatoes, the tin tomatoes I would rather add in um, the beans. Now what I also do quite often is when I cook it so I don't add it to the freezer bag because it doesn't freeze that well but I would add in about a cup of red lentils so half a cup of portion it just um, bulks it out it uh, reduces the cost of the overall meal and I think it makes it healthier as well as we go. moving straight on to chicken fajitas now for this one we need again some chicken breast fillets some peppers there I prefer red peppers on this one and I prefer red onions or purple onions as well but you can use brown onions and any kind of peppers as well and then in terms of spices we're looking at two tablespoons of paprika two tablespoons of cumin one tablespoon of onion powder two tablespoons of garlic powder about a quarter tablespoon of uh, sorry teaspoon of cayenne and then a tablespoon of sugar as well and then I would also salt and pepper to taste this one we have had and I just baked it in the oven for around 35 minutes at 180 and we served it on tortilla uh, wraps and then I just added some cheese and some salad and things on the side and it was absolutely delicious and all my kids loved it. Moving on to good old fashioned bolognese. So what I've used here is 400 grams of lean beef mince, approximately three grated carrots, a large onion that I've diced up, and then I'm adding in a tin of chopped tomatoes, a tablespoon of tomato paste, and then I've lately been putting sun-dried tomatoes in a lot of things. It just brings out a sweetness that is just 
amazing. So I've added in two sun-dried tomatoes here, that's four halves, two garlic cloves that I've crushed, and then a tablespoon of mixed herbs, and then of course salt and pepper to taste. And again, um, I put this one in the slow cooker for four hours on medium. And then once it was cooked through, I added in half a cup of red lentils um, and my pasta, and I added in some mature cheddar cheese, stirred it all through, waited for the pasta to cook, and that was essentially a one-pot meal, and it was absolutely delicious and I just served it with some garlic bread on the side. If I could hear my father's voice, he would tell me to move on. Now just a little trick that I've recently been doing on especially the mince base recipes here is I take my rolling pin and I roll it out so I have these flat parcels for the freezer and it just is so much better it takes up so much less spaces in the freezer and it just looks so much better as you can see here I have a couple of leftover mince bags there and I've just mixed in the carrot so I can use that for pretty much anything but there we have it that's all the meals all done um, this really does help me out throughout the month and I would definitely recommend that you give this a try it only took me about an hour to put all of these recipes together if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already I really look forward to seeing my next one bye Drinking wine until the dawn